once we booked it, he was like, this guy. And I'm like, I've seen his face. Because I don't know what video I watched, but I definitely <laughs> watched one of them. Probably seen my TikToks of me talking about how women should stay home. Well, then, funny <laughs> enough, you just got a Urus. Uh -huh. And I've been, I'm, I'm, like, stupidly trying to find the right Urus right now. Dude, absolutely like get one. Best car. Over the top. Best car. Um, yeah, I, I have, I think we're going tomorrow to look at one. Is the... What year what, is yours? What's the right Urus? Mine's a 2020. What's the right Urus for you? The right the right Urus is a 2020 with six months to 12 months of warranty still left. Probably okay. six months. Under 240. Under okay. 15,000. Oh, okay. With only black interior. Oh, really? You don't want any colors? Very specific. No, I don't want... Well, no, no, not only black. I don't want, like... Like, I've seen this one at LAC with, like... Are we recording? Yeah. Um, oh, we're recording. Recording. There was I've a few at LAC. I've sure. seen this one at LAC with, like, lime green and no, orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I sat in it, and he was like, dude, this is an NFL player's. And I don't know why, when he said that, I'm like, open the glove box. And I did, and the thing, like, almost fell out, like, off the hinge. No, oh, And I'm wow. like, this guy beat this thing to shit. <laughs> so then there was, there, was, um, there was a, bla a matte black one with lime green calipers yeah, that so. I loved for, like, 260-something. It I, was I, overpriced. I, for whatever reason, I'm like, I want to be below 250 at that year. And I kind of, and then last night I'm scrolling TikTok, shit you not, at 10 p.m. And this kid, I've never, I don't know who it is, some online gambling kid, mm -hmm. posts. It's 5 a.m. flying to get my yours. And he f is flying to Scottsdale to pick that thing up. And I'm like, no shit, that one's gone now. Wow. I looked so. at that one too, but it had way too many miles. And it was way overpriced for how many yeah. miles it had. Today I found a 22 with 3,000 miles in Florida. Mm-hmm. For how much? Two seventy. So, dude, I got maybe I got extremely lucky. What was I, your deal? I got mine with two thousand miles. It's a twenty twenty, uh, for two fifty nine, and it has the brown interior that I really want. Yeah. Have you seen the brown interior on the Urus? Uh, I think so. It's like, it's not tan. It's darker than tan. It's like peanut butter. Mm -hmm. You can for, barely and 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 for whatever reason, I don't. It's like that. Yeah, it's darker than I thought. Mm -hmm. I don't love it. For me. Yeah, it's, it doesn't look. I love it. Sick. I love it. So you love it? <laughs> love it. Better than the R8. I also have R8, a V10 plus. Are we just rolling? We're yeah, just rolling. rolling. All right, guys, we've been rolling. I guess you guys heard the in 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 uh, whatever intro talk <laughs> about a year. Us. Um, Sebastian Georgiou, mm -hmm. welcome to the pod. Twenty three years old, with about says here, is that a typo? Seven hundred twenty thousand YouTube subscribers. That's correct. Seven hundred twenty thousand YouTube subscribers, yes, sir. 130,000 Twitter followers, 100,000 uh -huh. Instagram followers, 92,000 on the TikTok. Yes. And then it says $1,000 to $8 million with a YouTube link. Wow. Do we have a lot to talk about, man? Welcome to the pod. Thank you. What the hell? Thank you for having me on. Well, where do we start? So mm. where, you're, you're from Michigan. Uh-huh. And you came out here when? Uh, I came out here like 12 years ago. It must, or maybe thir 11 years ago. I was 12 years old when I came, so... Just family? 11. Yeah. My, so my parents got divorced. My, my father's side of the family lives in Michigan. My mom's side lives here. And yeah. they've been divorced for a while, so my mom wanted to be with her family. Okay. So we, she just moved us all out there. Yeah. Okay, and you moved out here and went to the school system here, graduated oh. high school here. Yep. I went to Liberty High School in Peoria. Mm -hmm. I graduated here, and then I enrolled at GCU uh, for nursing, and then I dropped out two weeks after. So you, wait, you get, went to school and in two weeks you dropped out? I enrolled and then two weeks after I enrolled, I dropped out. So I didn't actually even go to class. I just dropped out. Interesting. Without in showing up. Okay. So what was the, like, why? Why would you drop out that fast? So I, uh, my mom couldn't afford college, so I had to apply for FAFSA and I was trying yeah. to get FAFSA. I didn't have the best grades. I had like B's or C's, but ultimately I was going to be paying for college myself because my mom couldn't afford it. And I told her, I was like, I don't want to go to college if I'm going to be paying for it. Like, I want to try something else. Before this conversation, I discovered Graham Stephan. Do you know who that is? Yeah. Yeah, so I discovered him. He had, like, 8,000 subs at the time. He was talking about how he was a real estate agent, how he was renting out houses, and uh, he, like, would just sell houses, make commissions, buy houses, and then, you know, snowball. And I was like, oh, you can make a lot of money if you, if you do that well for, like, 10 years. So I wanted to get my license. So I did get my real estate license when I was 18. Okay. So I dropped out of college to pursue real estate. And then while I was doing real estate, I found dropshipping. And then I started dropshipping while I was getting good at real estate or like going to classes. I was making a lot of money dropshipping. So then I stopped real estate. And okay. I just did dropshipping and that led into everything else. Okay. Yeah. So I was going to say, presumably, if you have 720,000, I mean, I'm jealous as hell. 
Uh, all I want in life, no joke, in my vision board and top three goals, literally in my life, Okay. one of my top goals is to have that 100,000 plaque. For oh, yeah. it, there, I don't Sitting care. In my room. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I, I'm, I'm sitting at 20,000 subs years later. We're trying our hardest. So obviously okay. we're doing something wrong, clearly. I'm give you some tips on the podcast. But in order to have that many subs, you got to be good at, at, at something behind the scenes from a value perspective. But also you got to be good at YouTube. So I want to talk about both of those. Please, yeah. I started drop shipping. Um, so 18 years old, you started to learn how to drop ship like, on Amazon, Shopify. Like, what did that look like? Yeah, it was around 18, like after senior year of high school. Um it was it was Shopify dropshipping. It was not Amazon. I did I did Amazon stuff later on, but it was Shopify primarily. Yeah, bro, I was just dropshipping and watching a ton of YouTube videos, meeting mm-hmm. a bunch of people, and and I I got lucky. I mean, my first store didn't really work that well. I tried it for a week, but then I I made another store based on one of my old friends' channel, Thaddeus Strickland. He talked about making a specific kind of store, a niche store, so selling like only gadgets of some sorts, like not selling a bunch of random stuff, like, which is what I was doing wrong. Uh, and I did that, and that first store was successful. And then every store that I made after that was more successful than the last one because I had always, I like, I learned how to do it, and I learned something new, and then I make a new store, and I, I did it better, and I yeah. did it better and better, obviously. That's how, you know, you learn stuff, so. Of course. So when you were building those at first, like, what was your, I mean, you couldn't have had a lot of money. Mm-mm. So how did you get started not having a lot of money? Because a lot of people want to do it without a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, I, I had maybe a few grand saved up, Um I had a few grand because I, I was working at Taco Bell and KFC, so I saved my money there. With the money I made there, I started flipping go karts and I started flipping furniture and go karts on offer up. <laughs> I swear. Nice. And so I, I made some money there and I built up a few grand. And then I worked at a car wash, vacuuming cars and selling auto glass and getting tips. And I uh, saved up a, a couple thousand dollars, but I had like I bought myself a G35, which is five grand as a senior. So I bought that and I had a cool car in high school, which is all I wanted. Uh, and then I had a few thousand left over, and I used that money to start dropshipping. Wow. So that's how it worked. Yeah, and I sold my G35, made profit on it. Because every I was flipping cars, too. Like, I was buying cars in the five to $8,000 range in high school and, and flipping them as well. And, like, I would drive them and then sell them for more because I'd, like, find a good deal. Wow. Yeah. So, interestingly enough, um, some of the first uh, – they're unlisted now. But some of the first – I could go pull them up. And some of the first videos on my YouTube channel, I bought a – robot that would um like have you ever heard or are you big like jordans or wear shoes or anything like that uh not jordans no i don't have a single pair okay oh <laughs> we got to talk about that <laughs> um so anyway i was into shoes still am to this day okay but i'm not like a i just i i buy what i like it's nothing to do with like oh well this gained value or something but at the time it was so when i was in high school it's called better maybe they're still around i'm not sure it was like 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. And I put in my credit card info, and you put in a, um, what's that called? A VPN. Okay. And it would, the code would click add to cart on these websites as soon as a shoe came out, yeah, as yeah. fast Bots. as it could. Yeah, yeah. And I was able to buy, at the t- this is when it probably wasn't as popular. This is when I was 17. I was able to buy like three or four of these Jordans. One of them would be my size, and I'd sell the other mm-hmm. ones. And that's how I was able to, I remember I was sitting in the back of an English classroom. Uh, junior or senior year, made 3000 bucks sitting there in first period on That's like sick. a Thursday afternoon or morning. And I remember thinking, like, holy shit, this is – and that was – flipping was kind of – Flipping sneakers. Yeah. How my, my friend used to do that from high school. He used to do that too. Yeah. Definitely a very possible thing that you could do, but it's it's gotten a lot more advanced. Like that industry from what it was is a oh, lot different now. I don't think I would stand a chance. Yeah. Um, how old are you now, by the way? 26. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I would do it and – um, it was a big, like 80,000 person Facebook group. And then I would, you know, you'd buy it then you'd go sell it. Yeah. It's um, a solid way to make money. But supplying wise, going back to your drop shipping or Shopify or whatever it was store, wh- who was your, like your suppliers early on? Like, how did you find the product to sell or know what to sell? Okay. So those are very different questions. Yeah. How did I find what to sell? I used AliExpress and I found suppliers from AliExpress in the beginning until I found, they're called agents, dropshipping agents, and there there are people in China that have warehouses, and they basically have better relationship with all the people on AliExpress because when you go from AliExpress, you're getting you're paying like top dollar, yeah. even though it's a wholesale website. But when you have agents, they get a better price, so they get products in cheaper, and they hold it in the warehouse so they can ship it out faster as well. So it's just a more efficient, more clean way to do it. 
And that's what I would do later on in my dropshipping career is I'd, I would use dropshipping agents, like just a guy I talked wow. to. And I would send him a link. I'm like, yo, can you get this? And he's like, yes, how many do you need? I'm like, 5,000 units or whatever. And then he'd okay. ship it in. So when did you transition? Presumably you started a YouTube channel about dropshipping. Mm -hmm. So like how long were you dropshipping before you're like, I want to talk about it on the internet or what sparked that? <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. So people, there was a lot of small people talking about dropshipping and it had just started to pop off. Right when I coincidentally like looked up how to make money on the internet, dropshipping was also like getting popular. It was a thing for a long time, but it was getting popular for the first time. Um, and I saw a bunch of little YouTubers talking about it. And a lot of people were saying it didn't work for them. And I had like within three weeks, two or three weeks, like I had already started making pretty good money. And so I was like, okay, well, I figured out kind of like a weird way to do it myself, like a variation and of how to make it work with Instagram influencers. And I would leave comments on videos and I'd be like, yo, if you, do you guys want to like, maybe I can make a video and show you how it works for me because it didn't yeah. work for anyone else and everyone would like it and it'd be like top comment. So once I saw that I could get top comment, um, I would go and try to get top comment on like everyone's videos. So if you go look at Alex Becker's old videos um, and a bunch of like other people that you don't know, like Real Zaki, Thaddeus, Rory, um, I'm like I'm top comment on a lot of their old videos because I would just post like I knew how to comment something that people would like. Uh, and it's <laughs> it's because no, there's a psychology to it. There's, it's because... When, when you see someone go from zero to, to something and, and it's like, do you, like, I figured out how to make it work. Do you want me to show you guys or I'm going to post a video? Other people like that. They like that story. They want to see how it happens. So they'll like that comment. They'll engage with it. And so, like, sure. I figured out how to make the comments, top comments. And so I built up a little reputation before I even had a channel. And people, like, kind of knew, like, oh, Sebastian, like, I've seen his comments. Um, you know, he's, he's making it work. He's making dropshipping work. So then I... Um, what made me, what pushed me to the edge is I bought Thaddeus' course, dropshipping course, and there's a Facebook group linked to it, and I saw there was 100, like 100 people in it, and based on the price of his course, it would have been like 100 grand that he made, and that's pure profit because it's a course, it's an info product. And so I saw that, and I was like, dang, like, that's smart. He created a YouTube channel, and then he sort of sold a course on it because he figured out how to make dropshipping work, and he made a ton of money. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I'm going to answer these people questions. I'm going to give them um, my advice on what I learned so far. Um, I'm also going to like document my journey through it and then potentially in the future I'll sell something as well to make more right. money. And, and that's what I did. Yeah. That's exactly okay. What so I, I say this funny. You're one of those Shopify gurus online back in the day. You're yeah. one of those course guys. I was, is I that shut down still the course today like, now or no, no more? No, no, course? No. So I shut down the course like three years ago cause I don't like the course business. It was, right. It was still making a lot of money and I shut it down because with, with courses you can't make everyone happy and I'm not against courses at all because you can make an incredible course and sell it for a great price and it yeah. can be a life-changing product for a lot of people. But I was just not, I was a 19, 20 year old kid. Like I was not in the position to make an incredible product like that and sell right. it for hundreds of dollars. So I took it down and I stopped selling it. I don't sell any courses now. I have a free course actually that people can enroll in for free um, mm -hmm. and learn about the most updated, most like the best way to dropship today right now. Um, okay. So that's a free course that anyone can join. There's yeah. over a hundred thousand people in it. Wow. So yeah. Um, and I just do my, my own things now, like my real estate stuff, my marketing agency. Um, and we make money with the course through affiliates and other stuff as well. But yeah, okay, I just, cool. I just closed that down. I'm not against courses. I'd probably make a course in the future. Like about YouTube. Yeah. I mean, and I think with the course stuff too, it's there. I, I find oftentimes if people, they feel like the moment they buy the course, then they should have the result. Mm -hmm. But that's actually the beginning of the, I mean, just because you've paid GCU, your tuition didn't mean you got a degree. So a lot of people kind of, that's why I think it gets a negative yeah. sort of connotation. Ultimately, the, the any business is, is not going to be like super easy to start. It's going to require a lot of work. And obviously not everyone that buys it is going to make it work and make it successful. Yeah. And if it doesn't work for them, they will blame it on the course and not themselves because people don't have that level of accountability. That's not natural. Yeah. So they will always say, it's like, okay, I bought this and I'm, it's still not working. But in reality, it's it's hard, and maybe they're doing something wrong. Maybe they misinterpreted something within the course wrong, or yeah. they just didn't receive it well. And yeah, all right, but cool. So yeah, I mean, I think I've gathered enough to now I know who you are. Um, that's awesome. First of all, congratulations. Thanks. Um, going into now today, though, I think that's more interesting to me. First of all, twenty three, crushing it. Um, uh, just. As a human being, what's it like being 23 and I don't know what you're making, but crushing it, making good money and you're in, I don't know where you live in Scottsdale, but we all know that it's 
crazy out here, and yeah. there's a lot of young dudes crushing it, so it doesn't, you know, it's not shocking. But what's it like for you? What's life like? It's crazy, dude. In October, uh, in October, we made a million dollars in two weeks profit. Wow. Just me and my business partner, and that was a couple months ago. It's definitely a record for me. Um, it's crazy because, it's crazy because in Detroit when I grew up, we got robbed. We barely had anything. There was a period of time where my mom couldn't afford the electricity, so the lights literally just went out in the house. And I would, w- when it got dark, we'd light a candle, and I would like take my candle to my room. That's how I would see through the house. In the morning, I tried cooking an egg on the candle because my mom wasn't home because she got up early to go to work, and I didn't have breakfast. So I tried cooking a candle with an egg, and it didn't, or tried cooking an egg with a candle, and it didn't work. Um, so I had to throw it away. So it's crazy to go from from that to making a, a like a ridiculous amount of money in two in the weeks. span of eleven years. Really? Mm-hmm. I mean, was uh, that when you were twelve, or were you younger than that at that time? How old was I? No, it was after. It was like right before I came to Arizona, so I must have been like twelve, like eleven wow. or twelve. To now, that's yeah. like a very short period of time to have to eleven years. Yeah. Wow. It's it's crazy to answer your question. It is really crazy. I um. I don't know. I just, I think it's, you kind of, for me, I'm a little bit used to it. Like I can recognize that it's crazy objectively, um, but you are kind of used to it because it is 1% a day. And then like sometimes there's like these big, you know, waves that increase. And then obviously there's points where it goes down. Um, but it's cool. I mean, it's a lot of work. It's really hard. It's It's been a painful process, but it's totally worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's super cool. So what's the day-to-day look like right now? I mean, are you... So I find a lot of people like to answer that question with like, dude, I, I outwork everybody. But like, then I, when I really sit down and look, I'm like, a lot of people don't do that. Like, yeah. wh- what's your day to day like? So I, it changes every single day for me looks different. It's not the same. Usually there's like a, a general structure routine, maybe a little bit, but even that outline changes a little bit depending on the state. So right now it's very relaxed. Like I will wake up, I'll do like the email stuff. I'll just take care of what's important priority uh and then i'll eat and i'll go to the gym like i'll do cardio like i'll play tennis i'll go train muay thai like i'll relax um right now what i'm focusing on a lot more is just creating really really great youtube videos to promote and grow my audience um and to understand very well what's going on in the world in in economics because now i'm at a point where i have a lot of like i'm sitting on a lot of resource like a lot of cash right now uh, a lot of liquidity that I believe um, is going to be very, it's going to be very important for me to allocate that and spend that correctly in the next 12 months. And if I do it properly, um, it will set me up for like the rest of my life. Um, So I actually posted a tweet. You don't follow me on Twitter, I don't think. Um, I will, not yet, but yeah. There is a, there is a, um, a sequence of events that are going to happen. So the Fed is currently raising interest rates. Yeah, of course. They're going to slow down the interest rates. They're going to stop raising interest rates. Then they're going to start decreasing the interest rates. Then after that, and historically, all the markets will bottom. Um, there are some other variables that could happen with like Binance and Tether because Tether is extremely unreliable and uh, Binance is like the, har- the largest holder of Tether and they just caused a bank run on FTX because that was a competitor, so they killed them. Th- I think they're also going to kill Tether. I think crypto will reach all-time lows. And so like just kind of, I'm trying to understand all these events and, and see what is going to happen in the next 12 months so mm-hmm. that I can buy into all of these markets at the perfect timing and then also sell it at the perfect timing to like yeah. 20x my net worth because I have millions of dollars I'm sitting on now. So it's like I don't need to wake up and work 10 hours a day and hustle and make all sorts of crazy videos. I don't need to like work really, really hard. Like I have that money, which is very powerful if I use it correctly. So yeah. now I'm just like using my brain. Like I'm just paying attention to the world. Um, and especially now because we're in a, in a reset, we're in a bear market and maybe a recession. Um, and these things don't happen very often in once a decade or even longer. So this is our shot right now. So yeah. we need to pay attention. That's what I'm doing. So my days are very relaxed. Like I didn't do much work today after this. Um, I'll eat food and maybe I'll go film a YouTube video if I want to. I'm going to have cigars with my brothers tonight. Um, I played tennis today. Like I just kind of relaxed. And Love it. Yeah. So I didn't do too much. So from a, a, I'm just peeling off for a second because we had a lot to unpack there. But just YouTube. I'm just curious. What is a 720,000 subscriber channel? How many views do you get a month on average? From YouTube, we're getting like 1.5 million a month. What is 1.5 million views a month? Like if you're doing 1.5 million views a month, like what's an estimated like revenue of that that you make? It's based on your CPM. So right. What is my CPM? What's yeah. your, what's you're in finance, so it's yeah. good. You have a great – it's one of the highest paid 
niches on YouTube. So and I, I imagine as you go higher, like as your scale, your CPM drops? Um, or no? Not necessarily. It just depends on the videos you make. Um, not right. necessarily, though. But if, if the video is about finance, it's a very valuable, informative, educational video. Your CPM will be higher. Um, also, videos that, like, inspire people and motivate people are have a higher CPM because if people watch the video and then there's an ad in the video, they're more likely to buy. And so it's a higher conversion rate, so it's a higher CPM. So in our industry, w how to make money, people know it takes money to make money. They're willing to spend money because we have a high CPM. So my CPM is like between 25 to 30 channel wide. Some videos have like a $70 CPM. Some videos have like a $19 CPM. Like a video where I talked about how I got jacked has like a $5. Which for the audience, CPM is cost per mile. Which is? Cost per thousand views. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so wow. how much I make per thousand views. Yeah. So you, you, you get how much you make CPM is how much you make per thousand views. You have RPM, which is half that because YouTube splits half half. Amazing. Yeah. So mine is like 25, 30 bucks. And so I make like about 25 to 30K a month off YouTube AdSense. One which month in October it was 50K. We had like two something, two million views. Which I think the cool part about that is like, oh, wow, that's a high number. That's so cool. But like once you've done the work on a solid YouTube video, some of those videos remain, have plenty of traction a They're year evergreen. or two yeah. later and it's like almost having your own little rental property sitting there on the internet yeah and you, it doesn't no tenants no nothing toilets yeah dude for sure i have videos that have i have one video on my channel that has made over 100k just for posting one video it required very low effort um it was like the high became successful in 34 days i i got up one morning i was actually extremely like depressed in my life when i filmed this video i got wow. up and i just filmed the video in one take i didn't edit it it was just one take, and I posted it, and it was like however many minutes long. It was like thirty minute, a thirty minute thing, and it. And you were just K. in front of the camera. I'll have to go check it out and just ramble. You're just talking. No lighting, no professional sound quality. I was like had face full of acne. I was just telling the story about how I like f made my first dropshipping store, and I made like a couple grand. Interesting, hundred grand. <laughs> so, do you think, from a production value perspective, sometimes people feel like they can relate to a lower uh, what's the word? A less produced, less edited piece of content. Mm, yeah. And then that video actually does better than the one that you spent all this time going in and out with all these extra graphics and takes Jason three weeks, just a slight dig at him, three weeks to get it back for the one graphic that he's working on, that just 10 seconds of the video. Dude, it's it works on both ends, kind of like a bell curve. Yeah. You ever see those memes where it's like, the retards and the geniuses like have the same thoughts? <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's the same thing. Because the... The videos that are extremely high production are very easy to watch, and, like, yeah. I love those videos. But then, like, you occasionally see, like, the video of, like, the old guy who's making, like, a 20-minute video, and it's just nothing. He turned on his, like, Android camera and just made a video and has, like, 30 million views. It's yeah. like, okay. So maybe there's some truth to both, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's so interesting. I mean, YouTube in itself, I think, is something that, the, uh, you know, so many people want to accomplish, like, that. I want to be a YouTuber. Like, you hear that, I'm sure, all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so from a processing standpoint, business standpoint on the back end, how much of YouTube is like a, a true business to you where you, you say, Oh, I, I have a marketing budget. I have an editing budget, or is it kind of just like on the whim and you kind of just blew up and it's just cause you, you are who you are. It was like that in the beginning, but, um, it was definitely like that in the beginning. And then now it's definitely very much so a business. I've, I've taken it more seriously now than ever before. And because of that, we're growing like now more than ever before. And is there a reason why? Is there, did you, there was there a moment in your life where you had a shift? You're like, I gotta. Well, I took a break from YouTube twice because I, I just needed to like, like calm down in life and just get off the internet and do my own thing. Like go like monk mode, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and when I came back, I took it a lot more seriously when I came back. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely very much a business. There's like, there's probably like 10 or 15, I don't even know. There's probably 10 or 15 people that help me run my YouTube channel. Um, editors, thumbnail designers, strategists, um, content strategists, like people that come up with ideas, thumbnail ideas, and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely a very much like a business that I think it's a, you should run it like that because ultimately you have to improve the quality of your videos. Like videos, retention, it's getting harder and harder for retention. Because of TikTok and Reels. Mr. Beast, like, bro, Mr. Beast has, like, changed everything. Um, and his videos are just – every single part of his videos are, are dialed in. Every single – 
word and every single second of the video is in there specifically for a reason. My videos yeah. are not like that. So if you get used to, if people get used to watching his videos, my videos are harder to watch. So I need to do better. So it's like the, the standard of quality is just going up. The standard of time and effort that goes into making a video is just going up. Um, if you want to stay competitive, you have to make really, really good videos. So I've put a lot of time into that and the channel has reflected it. Like it's grown a lot since then. Cause I think when I left, I had like a hundred thousand subs and then we just, we blew up, we're getting like 50 or 70,000 subs Crazy. a month. So, wow. So looking at that scope, making yourself some money, you, you pause, pause, pause. All right, we'll pause. Jason. Before I ruined your set. All good. It was pissing me off, man. I'm sorry. I couldn't take it anymore. Okay. No, the, actually, before you got here, I'm like, this is weird. And he's like, I know. I can't figure out the a <laughs> <laughs> Um, Okay, so going from then YouTube, you mentioned just a few minutes ago, like you said, real estate, different things like that. So obviously, I think the majority of your net worth is now in cash from a portfolio yeah. allocation standpoint. Yeah. But Say the cash that is moving right now, like what what pieces and components are you putting money into, first of all, that's in it, but then where are you going as well with the cash? So, okay, I'm trying to be really smart about this because I'm sitting on a lot of cash right now, but I have a lot of money in real estate. Um, well, not a lot. I, I don't even know. Probably like 500K. And I have like three, 400K in my cars as well. And yeah. then I have um, the, the cash as well. Um. But what I'm doing is because I'm sitting on all this cash, I'm actually, I'm not keeping it in the bank, which I just learned you never should. Um, so I opened up a uh, investment account through a brokerage firm. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect my bank account, which is already connected, and I'm getting a debit card for that investment account. And I'm putting like all my cash except for 50K, I'm keeping like 50K in my Chase account, all my cash into that investment account. And I'm, I'm putting that cash into the money market, which is extremely liquid and earns me 3%. Uh, mm -hmm. Just in case like a, a catastrophe happens in the world, like a bank run um, mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, and I have way more than 250K, which is yeah. what's insured. FTSC, yeah. yeah. So in the investment firm, it's like 100 million is insured. Um, but I just keep it in money markets or in treasury bonds until okay. I uh, want to make a move, which if I do, I can sell it in like a day, bring it into my account in a day and then make a move. So if like crypto drops 30%, the next day I could probably have Let's, if I was like trying to do like a three hundred thousand dollar buy, right? Um, the next day I could probably have that money in USD ready, to, ready to buy crypto. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm just keeping it there so it's safe. So it's also not. It's also a little bit of a hedge against inflation. It's a hedge against a bank run and and just I don't trust banks. I don't want my money with banks. Um, and it's just sitting there until I need to do something. But I have my eyes on uh, land, commercial real estate because I'd like to build. Um, commercial units and uh, develop because I'm developing my house right now. Yeah. And I would like to develop commercial units, rent them out, and then sell that as a business. But cool. th the thing is, is, okay, so I also made a lot of money with crypto. So, like, I also have a ton of money in crypto as well. Um, but with with crypto, it's I think that there's, there's two sides I can play. Because if I put money in real estate, it's kind of tied up. And if I keep it on the sidelines, it's kind of like losing its value, but I can also be quick with crypto. And, but at the same time is like, you don't really know when the next bull market was going to happen with crypto, but you can kind of tell the time because Bitcoin is going to have again in 2024 right. and all the rates will be done and the rates will probably be a lot lower by then. And like things will hopefully recover unless there's like another black swan, like Russia invading Ukraine or whatever. So you can kind of predict that there will be one more crypto bull run, which would be the biggest of them all in like 2025, 2026 range. Right. And so Ethereum or all these like the top coins will go up like Ethereum will 10x or 15x, depending on how low it gets. If finance does its thing with Tether, it will be like a 10, 15x. And if I'm smart and if I time that right, I would rather just put like all that money in there. Wait for the for the next bull run. Do like a 15, 20 X on all my money. Put all the put like half of that in all coins. Do like another 10x. Take all the money out before crypto dies right. again and then 100 million in real estate. And then yeah, do that instead it. of just like having real estate and then crypto goes crazy and I'm, I'm stuck with my hands in my pants. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was stuck with my hand in my pants in uh, 2020 with a bull run with, well, I didn't, well, actually Jason knows this. I don't, um, I've never liked crypto. Okay. Up to, and, and most people are like, Oh, Patrick's got out a ton of crypto. No, I actually had, 
up till only three weeks ago, I've, um, well, I should rephrase that. In 2017 or 2016, I bought my first two Bitcoins when it was like $800 or something. Mm -hmm. And then I sold it at like 1000 I thought I was an absolute genius. And then after that, I just left it. So then we have um, uh, COVID happens. What did it go to? Like 4K Bitcoin. I didn't buy it because I've grown up around oil. Mm -hmm. So I did the exact opposite. I went oil, 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 which turned out great. But I didn't buy Bitcoin at 4K or whatever. This run, I'm actually starting a YouTube video series on it where I'm publicly adding to my crypto portfolio. Yeah. So I've started to buy at 16, and I will not add again unless it hits 12. If it hits 12, I'll do it again. If it's 8, I'll do it again. If it's 4, I'll do it again. If it doesn't go down, I don't add anymore. So I'm, 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 I'm in the same essence. I'm not going to miss it this time. But I'm also not, I'm still not, like, I'm not willing to even risk 300K. I'm willing to risk maybe 50. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in, I don't understand it enough. Dude, I'm going to put, like, like a $2 million in crypto. <laughs> I'm not, I, I, I don't <laughs> trust it enough. I'm not interested enough. And I'm going to forget the 24 passcode thing to my ledger. Yeah. It's going to be gone. <laughs> so, I mean, you don't have to like the technology. I mean, if you want to make a ton of money, that's what we're here to do. Like yeah. the technology is cool. It's, uh, it's definitely, it was way ahead of its time. And when it first started happening, maybe now, not so much. Um, maybe now it's like a lot, maybe more practical in the next 10 years, it'll be more practical, but I'm, very much interested in just making a lot of money and yeah. there's nowhere really else you can like unless you play the lottery there's nowhere really else where you can make these kinds of crazy ass gains um and so if you just if you're smart about it and you're patient that's what it is it's patience yeah. if you're patient then you can make a lot of money and if you're not greedy and i think i think it's e it's going to be really easy for me because I, I have money it's really tough for people that don't have money to not totally. be greedy right so it's always it's always the people that are new that get wrecked it's always the people that like, oh, I had millions of dollars and I made 10 million with crypto. And it's like, okay, well, you don't need any more money. But they're not greedy. They're like, okay, I think based on history and it's like, okay, I made a ton of money. I think now's a good time to sell. Yeah. Like, let's just get out. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's just a smart play to go around about it like that. And I mean, the technology will be here in the future. Like, Yeah, I understand the technology. And actually, in the last, I don't know, three, four, five months, Obviously, FTX is more recent than that. I've started to understand the power of like, wow, my, you know, I'm not, this is a ex very exaggerated example, but my money on Coinbase wasn't as safe as I thought it was. Maybe. Yeah. So then, you know, that's when they're like, oh, you got to get a ledger. Okay. So I started yep. that. And then, you know, I tell that to half these crypto guys, you're an idiot, you know. Uh, and then I tell that these guys, oh, yeah, that's what you do. Yeah. And I think it just gets so new. There's so many opinions around it that I'm like, whatever. And... I just, you know, going to shove it there, stick with what I know, building businesses, real estate. Okay, well, if you have any crypto questions, I love it. Call me. I love it. And I'll help you out. <laughs> well, uh, I'll just, I'll call you before I click the button. You can tell me if I'm an idiot or not. <laughs> you can idiot test it. Like, buy now. Buy now, and I'll tell you when to sell. Yeah, love it. So, so you, you mentioned also uh, property, but it's yours. My house? Yeah. Yeah, so a new, you're building a new house. I'm doing a new build, yes. Yeah, I was doing a spec home, but I'm just going to live there because markets are not very good right now. Love it. So um, are you, like, how did that deal come about? Just bought the land or did you buy a house and bulldoze it? Like, what did that look like? No, I bought a, I bought a piece of land uh, up north in Scottsdale. I don't want to say the neighborhood. Oh, um, good. But it's, it's a really nice neighborhood. I'll tell you after. Uh, and I bought the land because some of my Romanian's friends, their father bought land, built a house, Spent like 1.3 million, sold it for 2.7 million, made a million dollars like that, like in two years. And I was like, oh, dang, this is sick. So I had bought a townhouse and I'd flipped it and I'd taken all that cash that I got at the end of the day and I just bought a piece of land with it and I started just developing my own house. And Amazing. The framing is done as of like two weeks ago. So they're going to do electric and plumbing. How many square feet? Uh, 3850. Awesome. 3850 livable, um, three car garage, big driveway, like a big front courtyard, big back courtyard. I love it. It's not. It's not too big. I definitely like. And your end goal is to eventually get out of it. You're gonna sell it at some point. Yeah, but for, for sure. now you're gonna live in it because of the market. Yeah, I was gonna sell it. Um, I was gonna sell it originally, but now I'm just gonna live in it. And also, when I started this project, I didn't have a girlfriend. I was serious about. Now I do. So now, uh oh, it's like when she comes, like I'd want to live with her yeah. and have a nice spot and not live in an apartment. But at the same, like at the same time, I could sell it, make a million dollars. I got a full cash offer for two point six. Yeah, um, my budget's one point three, so it's like I could sell it, make a million dollars, and have an extra million dollars in my bank account, and then what? 
what am I going to do? So like, okay, just live in it for a while and figure something out. Yeah. Because mil- an extra million won't do much. It might just be sitting on the sideline until I make a move with it. Right. But yeah, I don't know. That's awesome, man. So um, what did you – so I don't know if you knew, but I am – there's eight of us in a syndication, Paradise Valley. Okay. Editing is going to have to bleep out some of these numbers because it's not done yet. But um, first of all, what I'll kind of share what I learned, but what did you learn or what have you learned so far developing? Are are you very into that or are you kind of – do you have like a, you know, a group of GCs that are helping you through the process and you're just kind of telling them what – slabs you on or you, were you in with the architect like how, how in depth were you in yeah the yeah yeah i'm um i yeah i definitely have people doing everything so yeah. like with the architect i'm like this is kind of what i want and he'll bring it to me and i'll be like okay i like that change this do this and then um i have an interior designer so same thing like this is kind of the vibe i'm going for here are like 10 pictures pictures of the bedroom or yeah whatever. and then she'll do it and then i'll be like okay make like some edits here do this do that and then the gc just does everything so i don't Amazing. like take any phone calls like hey we're gonna pour the slab today or like do the frame mm. today like i don't deal with any of that they just call me they say hey we're gonna order your windows uh next friday do you want to come look at samples hey can you drop off a check hey um can you meet me here one time and it's very easy yeah i don't really do much yeah so our build first of all 99 foot infinity pool on top of the mountain in clearwater hills you're building it, a house yeah the largest infinity pool in the state of arizona so oh clickbait well. to the max there for you. Is that YouTube. your house? Or are you building? No, no, no. It's a, it's a, it's eight of us that we're just flipping it. It's already sold. Oh. oh so wow. we got it in July of 2020. Um, oh. It's a, it, there again. There's eight of us, and um, we got it in July of 2020. Old rundown rental that was like 3,000 square feet. Um, like I could show you pictures of it. But just destroyed. The, the holes in it, and the guy is from LA. Owns all these houses. Didn't know is that destroyed. Back and forth, back and forth with my partners. Uh, Max and Patrick, who I do a lot of business with, and they finally got it. So we got this house for, I think it was. Oh. Wow. And at first it was like, okay, let's let's just add some square footage to it because that's where the value is. It's not in changing the paint. Mm-hmm. So then we started, and then they started to look at, that was COVID hits. And it's like we were delayed for six months, but then by the time we're delayed, you saw what happened to the housing market. So yeah. they're like, wait, we can get way more for a new build than a remodel. Mm-hmm. Bulldoze a thing. 10,000 square feet sold. Dang. And she has to edit out some of that, but, um, that's crazy. Yeah. We do it like for the home, like on the remodel, call it a lot of beeps going on here. For some person from India. And you guys split the profit eight ways. Yeah, we're not all even. I'm okay. actually one of the smallest fish, uh-huh. but the 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 value of through investing in that has been, I mean, just the guys that are in that, and I mean, some of them have, this is their tenth, and it's just like the knowledge they have is just so interesting to mm-hmm. watch. And, and and really, the biggest thing I learned about that was like, if you're going to get into developing or flipping homes, never buy a three thousand square foot house and sell a three thousand square foot house. Mm-hmm. Buy a three thousand square foot and make damn well sure that you're adding square footage somewhere because of the the cost to build is so much, especially in that area. It's over, you know, what is that fifteen hundred a foot? It you know it doesn't cost you fifteen hundred a foot. It costs you five hundred at max, and you're every imagine every five bucks you put in, you get fifteen out. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's been uh, interesting. That's why I ask because I'm I'm sitting in Old Town right now in, in a twenty seven hundred square foot townhouse just waiting to do something like that and i just don't the timing is off right now for me so it's you know you're just waiting how long did it take you guys to do that project it's still going okay so you, yeah. you said so you we s- got it in july of 2020 okay um delayed seven months so we didn't do anything for till 2021 but it has been sold um, right yeah it's been sold non-refundable deposit all in there changed all the stuff those buyers are particular as crap like Every last detail. So you're still working on it. Before yeah, yeah, yeah. Still transition. actually next week or the week after about to go shoot another video. Because we've been documenting on YouTube. Like the first video I have up there, it's like the old riggedy house. And there's a video of me hitting sledgehammers off the walls. Dude, and it's bulldozed. I want to see the, but, the series. Yeah, the series is good, but there's like 20 views on it. So, I, you know, <laughs> we're trying. Okay, we're trying. Well, I'll check out. I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. What, what we we drop do. five grand per video on some of these videos for editing and things. No and uh, I just can't get the traction. I'm trying, man. Wow. Right. So, so, so let me segue that by saying SEO strategy. What's the ticket on YouTube? Dude, you just, uh, 
you have to make the best videos. <laughs> you have to make really good videos. And yeah. if you make really good videos, YouTube will promote them. YouTube knows it's a genius. And I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you don't. if you spend I a lot of money on a video, I'm it trying. does not mean it's a good video. Yeah. And what makes a good video, what really, what really makes a good video or, or a good piece of content, long form or short form, is whether or not you can get someone to feel an emotion about it. Because if someone, mm. people, people behave based on their emotions, and if they feel an emotion after watching your video, they'll comment, they'll save it, they'll engage with it, they'll watch the whole video. Um, and, and that's all that it takes is just getting someone to feel an emotion. So you could do that by by teaching them something they didn't know, by um, invoking some sort of like bold claim, like having a bold claim um, of like something controversial, something they agree with, something they disagree with, um, or showing something that they didn't know. And like you see videos that, <coughs> like story videos, how I made this much money that my from 1K to 8 million view is just a story. It's just a story about how a kid, a broke kid, a broken childhood went from zero to uh, you know a bunch of money, and that gives all people all sorts of emotions. Like that makes them happy. It makes them feel inspired. It makes yeah. them like motivated to do it themselves. They're like he, if he can do it, I can do it. And uh, all those emotions flowing in, in that video. They watch the whole video. They engage with it. They share it with their mom. They share it with their friends. And the video goes viral. So it's all about emotion, um, wow. in my opinion. And and that helps with retention as well. Um, so you can have like all the cool, crazy effects and you can edit it however you want to edit it. But at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. So I know like, have you ever seen that series like Homemade Home? A guy was making a house for, he bought a house for 13 grand and he was doing everything himself. You ever seen that before? No. That series, it, it had like 20 million views. Yeah. Cause it, so, so the reason I bring up the series stuff is I feel like series do well. Do you feel like that? The, I went from the nothing good, yeah. to... Um, I, it's funny cause there, there, it, there's a lot of people that do this, but like, I don't care if an investment makes money or not. I just post about it on the internet. So I did this thing with an Amazon store. They call Amazon automation. Mm -hmm. Total joke. Okay. But like, it, <laughs> like, like it did really well and then really poorly and then really well. And then they like disappeared. So then I like got another one and then I've been tracking this one. Total, total like waste of money. Total is stupid okay but that's how i went from zero to twenty thousand. was like i didn't care whether it was making that first store i did over a million bucks and like netted me like 80 something thousand mm -hmm. i don't know shit about drop shipping amazon none of that the second store we, we just shot a video on it um it's like almost losing money every month on average because of the amount of returns we're having mm -hmm. and the fees do you think storytelling like blunt honesty it wins or is it like who's flashiest um like can pull the heartstrings the most in an inspirational way that, that wins there's a lot of different types of people in the world and a lot of different creators that are good at certain things like good at pulling strings or good at inspiring inspiring and and let's say you have all the creators down here, all of the audience, all of the people watching will fall into like these people, whatever they're good at, whatever they resonate. What I'm saying is like, I might be good at something that resonates with uh, 10, a, a 10 million pool of people all over the country. And those people will eventually come down to me. Um, and somebody else that's 23, that's just like me, that's also doing business. They'll have a completely separate pool of people just based right. by their beliefs and the way they talk and stuff. So it, it doesn't really matter. Like you can be good at something. It will cater to a few million people in the world that will come and listen to you. Yeah. Um, but for the series, the, the series are good because the series are good if they're good. Like if um, people get invested and, and they want to see like, especially what if it's not next. doing well. Yeah. And if yeah. it's not doing well, if it's doing really well, like they get invested in it. So it's, yeah, yeah. it works. It's really yeah. It, it had, you know, I mean, not success to your scale, but to me going from a hundred subs. How many views did you get on it? Some of them were 15, 20, 30,000 views. And you know, that's pretty good. You got all these Amazon guys hitting me up going, dude, like you're the only channel that has, you know, it, it was working for that scale. That's a niche element mm -hmm. as is drop shipping, but drop shipping in general, Shopify, what you're doing, I feel like is niche, but it's, you have a bigger pool. There's a, a lot of, I mean, that's what I see that every day. I can't, I literally can't turn on YouTube without there being like a recommended drop shipping video or a, an ad from me or just from anyone. Well, you too, mm -hmm. but you know, just in general, there's, it just seems like there's just so much of that. Yeah. And that's I mean, where it's like, there's you, you, you're on top of that industry. So you're getting recommended more than the rest, as you're saying. Yeah. I mean, there's probably definitely a greater pool of people that are interested in dropshipping because 
um, it's more, more maybe it's more practical to them like versus something in real estate like yeah. I would watch a series like that if I wanted to get inspired not to learn anything but if I'm trying to like do something right now then I would watch a dropshipping video got it so so the, the the other thing you said when we were talking about your assets you mentioned cars mm -hmm. uh, some people don't like talking about stuff they have are, are you I, I checked your Instagram out yesterday before we had this and you posted about them so I presume you'll talk about them um, so you have two cars right now so I have I have four cars. Four cars. Yeah, I have four cars and a Grom. What's a Grom? It's like a it's like a little pocket rocket bike. Oh, it's like the gr three grand. <laughs> Let's go. But I have a Grom, so I have five vehicles. <laughs> okay, so what what are they? Um, I have, I have the Urus. I have the Audi R8. I have the Dodge Ram Cummins. I have a Porsche. Um, and yeah, and then the Grom. The Grom. Yeah. <laughs> the Grom. Mm -hmm. I love that. So. What about, I'm curious if, if, if anything at all, do you buy them for any reason other than you love cars or do you buy them for a marketing purpose like some that I know people do? Um, so two, th two things can be true at once. <laughs> so yeah. I buy them because they're a tax write-off. I buy them because I really like cars and that's where I like to spend my money. I don't really spend money anywhere else. Um, You're so a watch guy? I know that's I have you two like watches. This is one of them. First Rolex. Love it. Um, I just got this. It's from Cartier. It's the first piece of jewelry I ever bought. That's it. So, this is a. You don't mind that I say it looks like a rubber band, right? It looks like it's a silk. Yeah, I mean, it's just wow. a silk Cartier. I'm As curious, what does one of those cost? It's seven hundred bucks. We're in the wrong business. <laughs> <laughs> that costs five bucks to make. Seven hundred. It's the gold. The gold, rose gold. Okay, it's gold. White gold. Yeah. Oh my God! All right, it's all right. Cheapest beside cheapest beside the point. Wa watches have. I like. I, I've just this year gotten into watches. Uh, I got a root beer. Nice. And if I'm lucky, I'm told I'll have uh, a day date in the next like three weeks. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But um, I like that, and you probably know why. If you can get them at you know, I get them at retail. From watches the are great, man. It's a great time um, to even buy them now. Yeah, you know? it's great. It's great time right now. Actually, one of the partners in the office who just left before you got here just got uh, not that one, but the Wimbledon one. Uh huh. Uh, it's got yeah. the green Roman numerals, gray, yeah. gray dial. Yeah. Um, awesome spot to put. You know, it's like a little savings account. Kind yeah, of why not? Cool. So back to the cars, though. The true at once, true, or you said true at the same time. So you do it for marketing. Yeah, yeah. But you also do it because you love it. I, I, the, the business. The first reason I do it is because I really like cars. I make pretty good money, and that's where I want to spend my money. So I don't buy like a lot of designer clothes. I wear. If you're a close friend of mine, you'll you'll know that I wear this like the same sweatshirt or the same jeans every single day. Like I yeah. wash them like once a week and I like pretty much wear almost the same clothes every day. Um, so I don't spend money really anywhere besides like that. So it's like cars because they're fun. I really like cars. Um, and then I also get to write them off if I buy the right cars. So like the Urus is a complete tax write off. Totally. So that's good. Going um, away in a few days though. And then, yeah, there's, and I looked into that. There's also another way to loophole it. It's oh not yeah. completely gone, but yeah. Yeah, um, and then uh, then after that, just to, you know, kind of flex a little bit, show everybody I know what I'm talking about, maybe a little yeah. bit, like give me. A well, that's kind of what I wanted me. you to say because yeah. I'm curious, um, and I'm over here curious, like acting like I I I drive a Honda Civic or something. But I'm I'm curious with like an R8, that's pretty flashy. Obviously, come on, a Lamborghini Urus, that's very flashy. Have you noticed anything? Um, in any of your cars where, like, it's attracted something different, like people coming up to you or online, it's helped you in any way from a business perspective, met new people, respect, I don't know. Yeah, I, I definitely, you can tell, you can tell when someone respects you, um, and the, the thing is, most of, like, <laughs> it's, like, a lot of word of mouth marketing, like, a lot of people know who I kind of am, like, in our age range and stuff, like, yeah. on the, on the mark, on the, the side of the internet, um, like I don't really have to do too much. Like I just put one picture on the internet and it's like, I bought a Urus and like everybody will tell everybody else that I bought a Urus. I don't even have to tell them. It's like, everyone will know. Um, and it's like, it's cool. Cause you do get the respect from people. Cause it's, it's cool. It's sick. Um, and yeah, like people in person, like they see it and they're like, that's dope. That's a sick car. So it does, it does all of that for sure. Yeah. But I'm not going to lie to you. That's not the reason I buy it. I buy it. Cause I just, I want a really fun car and I want to write off a lot of money on taxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one's your favorite? Out of any of those, which one's your favorite? Um, I mean, you haven't had the Urus long enough to maybe know that. Maybe you have. So, yeah, I've also had, okay, so I've also had a Range Rover. I've had a GTR. I had a 911. Um, out of all the cars, the Urus is my favorite. Out of all the cars. 
And I really, really like the R8 a lot, and it was my favorite car, but the Urus is just my favorite and car. And uh, just because it's a Lamborghini SUV, comfortable? It's just everything you need it to be, bro. It's it's It looks incredible. It's fast. It's very comfortable. It's very luxurious. So it's fast and luxurious, which is something yeah. that you don't get very often. Um, and it's just everything in one car. Like, I, can, I have a huge trunk. I can put five people in it. Speakers yeah. are amazing. Like, we can bump. We can mob, squat up. Like, it's sick. It's just Love a dope it. car all around. And it's a tax write-off. It's basically free. Like, it's sick. Yeah. yeah. So, um, just from a high-level overview of your life, like, what is your – I mean, you, you kind of scoped it out. You, you, you're sitting on cash. You're very aware. You're like, don't screw this up, and I can set myself up for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. But is that it? You're going to figure that out, get some money in. Obviously, we talked about crypto, everything. Get it set, and then you're just done. You're going to retire, go off into the sunset, never make YouTube again. Like, what's the goal? Like, what what, what are you doing all this for? I want to have a huge family. Okay. And I want to I like have, a like, a ton of kids. Yeah, well, I want to have, like, at least seven kids. <laughs> you want to have a mini bus? You need to Yours doesn't have seven seats. You're going to have to have a mini bus. <laughs> we'll get another one. <laughs> you may have a Sprinter. Good. Um, my cousins are have 17 in their family. I have cousins that have 12. I have friends that are Romanian that have 22. Wow. And it, there's it's, like, not uncommon to have a huge family in yeah. Romanian culture. I want to have a huge family, um, which is going to require money, especially because I want to do it right. So I also want to be, like, ultra super prepared for the end of the world because I'm also kind of like a doomsday, like, conspiracy theorist government is against us and i just very very much so want to be independent and self-sufficient which is costs a lot of money it's like i'm talking like want to have like an estate in the corner of the country somewhere where i have a a plane in a in a landing strip in my backyard and a (laughs) jet paid off and like everything ready to go and like homes across the world like i want to have all that so that's kind of why i'm making money it's kind of like a video game to me so uh and also to have a bunch of kids it's just like you just need a lot of money <laughs> like yeah. to do all of this stuff you need a lot of money like i'm not wow. just trying to live like you know right here and then my neighbor is right here and then yeah. when the government comes and tells us all to stay on our homes and tanks are on the roads and stuff um i'm just utterly screwed with my family and my wife looks at me and she's like i'm like i'm sorry we're all gonna die <laughs> like i'm sorry i don't want to do that so i need a lot of money are you gonna be one of those people that builds the bunker underground yeah 100 percent nuclear bunker. Have you seen those um i've seen like eight layers deep yeah, th- it gets crazy. You can, people, it's actually a business now where uh, the companies build it I've for you. That. Yeah, super cool. <laughs> yeah, so I'll have that. You're going to have the bunker. Yeah, for sure. I can't tell you where, but I'll have the bunker. <laughs> wow. So um, just from the world itself, what do you think about the world we live in today? It's crazy, man. It's a crazy world. I think uh, I think a few people in the world run the entire world, and um, yeah. and it's not about money for them. And it never has been because they have unlimited money. They're in control of all the money. And so when it's not about money, it's about power. And I don't know. I can't I can't think like like these people do because I'm not these people. I've never been in that like position. I don't have their perspective in life. I don't know what they are after, but it's not good. And that they don't care about us. And I want yeah. to just protect myself and my family. I have, I'm in very in tune with that protective instinct that I have inside me. I see and that. I just very, very want to be separate and away from them. And I want to have, just be with my family. So I need to be extra, extra, extra safe. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's crazy because most people are, I think most people not talking crap. Cause I, maybe this will come off the wrong way. Most people are like, don't realize how ins- and how bad of a position they are or how um, dangerous of a position they are just in everyday life. Um, just living like whatever they live with no backup plan with nothing going on like the world operates i feel like um like behind a very thin curtain like behind on top of very thin ice if like if if in one hour your phone stopped working and the gas pump stopped working and like there was something happening on the news and there was uncertainty like everyone would be utterly screwed and i don't want to be in that position and to think that that's impossible is is ridiculous i think it's stupid uh, you'd, you'd have to be like a fool to think that that something like that is not possible at some time in the future. Yeah. And well, the, the, I mean, even so the electric cars that kind of brings that, that's, that's kind of when you say that I've seen a lot of comments, I got a Tesla this year and there's a lot of comments about like nothing stopping them from just clicking a button. Yeah. And all your cars stop working. EMP. And it's just like, so true. Yeah. Um, it's a good point. I, lo- I I got in it this morning, and it's like, hey, here's your new update. Yeah, I mean, 
For all they could have done, they could have said, hey, all Teslas drive forward at 80 miles an hour, and a bunch of garages just got destroyed, yeah. including mine. Yeah. So, I, th I mean, just the technology in itself. Imagine a hack. I was actually thinking about that last week. Mm -hmm. the, I don't know how it all works, but these Tesla networks, they all get hacked, and they all do something weird. Like, all of them just max acceleration while everybody's driving, and everybody's just running into stuff. This happened? No, I'm saying... Oh, uh, it I, could happen. I, <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> I... I th I was thinking about that just last week yeah, yeah. when you said that, and it's just like, I think that could happen. Yeah, it's not completely out of the question. I mean, anything could happen, and what does happen, we probably won't foresee. But it's yeah. you'd want to be as protected against any unforeseen event as possible, right? So you'd want to have, or you would want to be safe and, and just be extra safe and not need the extra safety than to not be safe and need the extra safety. Yeah, totally. So always be prepared. Yeah. Well, I, I love it. Um, first of all, your perspective and just your story has been amazing. I appreciate Thank you coming you. on. Yeah. Um, the age demographics generally 18 to 30 that listens to this. Okay. So what message do you have for the majority? They're just trying to get going. They're trying to figure out their spark in life. They're trying to, you know, they've been told to that. Like I was told to go to college. I did all the things, but like, you know, they've been told to do all these things and they're just, they're trying to do their own thing and get ahead. Mm -hmm. What's your message to them? Because you, you seem to do that in a very, I mean, very, very, very quick, accelerated manner. And you're 23 with the maturity of 43. And, you know, like your experience is valuable. So what, what would you tell them? Yeah, I think it's, I think uh, young men, it's absolutely necessary that you do um, whatever it is and exactly what it is that you want to do in your own life. And under no circumstance, you should live for anyone else. You should not live to please anyone else, um, to please your parents or your wife, your girlfriend, anyone. You should always do whatever you think is best for you in your life. So if you, you everybody has like this, um, I feel like they have this voice or this direction that they feel like they should be going towards. And, and you should always listen to that and go in that direction and not live your life based on anyone else. So I would say that first. If you feel like, you are the type of person that needs to create a business. And if you're listening to this and like you say, okay, like I resonate with what he's saying about being protected. I want to be protected too. And I need money. Then do not do that. And do not stop until you have it, no matter what, even if it takes 10 years, like just, you have yeah. to do it. So that would be my advice to, to the, to the young man It's primarily men, right? Watching it. Yeah. So yeah, that, and also, um, it, while you do that in the meantime, you should also try to become the absolute best version your, of yourself in every single realm possible. So mentally and physically and financially and, and being funny and whatever else. Like, you, sh you should just be the highest evolution of whoever you can become because life is a lot better when you're there. And yep. you have more friends and you can appreciate and enjoy things and enjoy more situations and events that happen. And just the amount of uh, joy and fulfillment that you can squeeze out of life is a lot more up there. And so the thing is, is you have to work to, to earn that, but it's definitely 100% worth it, like 100x over so uh, you have to always push for that, always, all the time. That's my message for them. Wow. Well, I think we'll leave it like that. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I, I appreciate you coming. And yeah. um, the all in the in the description, all of his stuff will be in there. So all of my paid courses. Go go check <laughs> it out. He's a he's a crypto guru. He's got a course for that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All, all his YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, it'll all be down there. Click, follow him, subscribe, because he he needs plenty more of those. <laughs> Click and do it. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you, guys. See you.